ahead. I will call this meeting to order. Will you please join me in the pledge to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, Rob. Will you please call the roll? <coughs> Emily Ewald. Here. Cindra Keeler. Here. Tom Lingby. Here. Brian Miller. Here. Glenn Newcomer. Here. Thank you. You have in your packet the uh, May regular, May 25th, and June 1st special meeting minutes. If you have no additions or corrections, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. I got Glenn and second by Tom. Please call the roll. Cindra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brian? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. And we are at the time in our meeting we have public participation, and I know we have a guest today. So, Eric, if you'd like to come over and introduce yourself to the board, that'd be great. Okay. Do I look this way? Or not? You can look this way, and you can introduce, introduce yourself to the board. Okay. I am Eric Gendron. I am currently a Life, life Scout. I'm working toward my Eagle for my Eagle project this summer. I'm, I'm looking to build a shed for the Eden Public Library since they're running out of space. And I'm here to work on my communication and citizenship in the community merit badges. Thank you. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks for coming. If there's no other public participation, Sindri, I have a four county report. Just real quick, um, the students got their passports on May 22nd and then were part of our, of course, graduation here on um, June 11th. And otherwise, it's just summer building projects to keep things all in order for the next school year to start again. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ross, we're ready for the treasurer's report. Okay, thank you. We'll start with the financial reports for the month ended May 31, 2017, our cash reconciliation report at Farmers and Merchants State Banks, a balance of $7,451,261. Outstanding checks and adjustments, $65,137. At Star Ohio, a balance of $3,258,000. $751. At Morgan Stanley, $10,692,844. And at State Bank, $6,145,788. Petty cash and change funds, total $5,050. Total funds on hand, $27,488,557. Of those balances, the general fund balance was $13,867,661. Permanent Improvement Fund, $2,346,577. The uh, Capital Project Fund Local Share, $6,081,498. Capital Project Fund State Share, $2,392,430. Once again, $27,488,557. Our SM2 report for the month, our revenues tracking about 261000 ahead of budget for the year and our, rev our expenses were about 385000 The $75,000 variance on the advance out, um, I processed that in May and I had it targeted in June, so we have a little difference in timing there. So our uh, budget variance for the year is about $650,000 to the positive. Any questions on those reports? We'll look at amended appropriations next. The appropriation amount at the end of May, $38,202,715. Appropriation changes during the month totaled $8,862. Temporary appropriations for the upcoming school year. We place these appropriations so we have funds in place to start the new school year our new fiscal year on uh, July 1. Our total appropriations for our temporary appropriations are $24,329,156. Of that, the general fund temporary appropriations are $20,996,271. Any questions on appropriations? No, sir. Not. We'll move on. We ask the board's permission to participate in all federal programs for the 2017-18 school year, including all federal grants. I ask the board's permission to participate in 2017-18 
federal lunch and breakfast program, including free and reduced lunches, breakfast, and commodity programs. Do you know about what percentage we have? Roughly free, free and reduced. reduced. It's about fifty percent right now, or is it more than that? Street wide is about forty. Forty district. Forty over the district. Thank you. Higher Thank you. at the elementary. Thank you, Mr. Higher at the elementary. Yes. That's the closer to fifty percent. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We uh, presenting uh, the property liability auto insurance quote from Walters and Peck for the upcoming fiscal year, July one through June thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. $75,412. Uh, we will be tweaking that a little bit as we uh, reduce our property values as we tear down the Washington and high school buildings. Ask your permission to approve the technical service agreement for fiscal year 2018 with Northern Buckeye Education Council. We ask your permission to transfer the net difference between the rental income and the operating expenses for the central building education wing from the general fund to the permanent improvement fund. That's an exercise we do annually to transfer our profits to the permanent improvement fund from the general fund on the Fountain City Christian School lease. We ask your permission to approve a, an update to the lease renewal with Fountain City Christian School for the period September 1, 2017 to August 31, 2018, Fountain City is going to lease the first floor, which Bryan City School District was currently occupying, which will um, produce about $24,000 additional revenue for the district for the year. We ask your permission to approve the milk bid submitted for the 2017-18 school year with Defiance Dairy as recommended by Mr. Bassett. We ask for your approval for a payment plan with Caitlin Burnett, the set by the district treasurer. We have donations that we'd like to uh, mention. The pole vault poles valued at $1,114 from the Athletic Booster Club to the track team. $76 from the junior class post prom parents to the bear bag program. And a donation from George and Julie Brown through the Bryan Area Foundation in the amount of $1,000 to our music program. We'll stop there for now. Get approval on that, please. Do you have any questions regarding Mr. Ross Rome's report? Rob, <coughs> on the uh, the central building with the Fountain City Christian, how is how is that tracking expenses to revenue? Uh, about forty thousand dollar profit a year on that. All right. It's and, uh, that would be low end. All right, and just roughly, where do we sit with uh, relative our, our income relative to the initial uh, the original investment? We have covered we have covered the investment for the second and third floor on the Fountain City side. Uh, we have not covered yet totally our investment on the first floor, but we are working closely to it. I'll bring I'll bring you some exact numbers after we get all the transfers yeah. made at the end of this month. I'll report next month to you and give you the exact. So we've numbers. been occupying the first floor. So we have we occupied have not, the first this floor. This will be the first year that we've we received. Are, Rental. We're very fortunate we had the first floor because it's worked out very well for us for preschool and right. some of our administration mm -hmm. offices. So it's been very, very valuable space for the district for having to have that first floor and uh, in, in the remodeled condition and so forth. It's it's wonderful space. Great. Thank you. There are no other questions. Motion to approve, please. Also, so, Sindra. I'll sec second it. Tom, second. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Yes. Ryan? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Sindra? Yes. Thank you. And one final item here, uh, your approval on change order number 136 for the pre-K to 5 construction project. The amount of that change order is $55,975. This is to replace some of the doors that were not originally in the bid. Uh, we, After looking at the project, Mr. Roofer uh, had come back and recommended that we replace all the doors so this is the cost to finish replacing mm -hmm. doors is that correct, that's correct. <coughs> mm -hmm. so that's so fifty five thousand nine seventy throughout the building correct. correct we'll have completely new doors all throughout all right a motion to approve the change order so moved glenn second please second thanks ryan thanks <laughs> call the roll ryan for tom I know. yes glenn yes emily yes Sindra. yes tom yes Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. Okay. Well, business, Mrs. Savage. 
Under old business on a construction update, just some multiple reminders for the board and the community. First off, we'll start at Washington. Our auction of furniture and fixtures and some equipment will be held this Thursday. So uh, come on out to Washington uh, for our auction. It'll start at 4 p.m. Anyone can come. And anyone, anyone can, can come, and we're, we welcome all to come. And then following the auction this week, the abatement of the asbestos and the demolition of that building will begin on July 1. So we will wrap up our um, occupancy of Washington and allow that demolition process to begin. Moving on to Portland, uh, there's been lots of questions regarding the auction at Portland. That will be held late September. We're finalizing the date tonight with the contract approval later on, um, set for September 21st. That will also be a week, I think it's a Thursday as well. Um, and we are out right now, we're finishing up the, um, the bids for the demolition and the abatement of Portland. Um, currently, right now, the Portland campus is providing us some great space to store all of our educational supplies <coughs> and um, things that we need to transfer into the new building once it's open. So that process has begun as well. At the new pre-K to 5 building, we are still on track as far as the date. Uh, in the most complete part, in the academic wing on the second floor, the carpeting is installed. They're starting to clean and work on punch list items to finish. Uh, when we move down towards the office, the furniture is installed. Um, carpeting will come soon. The media center has the carpet installed. Um, they're working towards the cafeteria. They're starting to bring equipment in the cafeteria. They've installed the flooring there. Uh, the upstairs gym is getting a new wood floor. That'll go in, I believe they told us, in uh, July. And once the air conditioning and the climate control is all set and working, um, the kindergarten wings and preschool special ed are having the cabinetry installed and will work towards flooring. In the playground, um, half of it is poured with the cement half for basketball and sports games and, and other um, games involving concrete space. And then the other half will start going in in a couple of weeks. And that is things that kids can spin on, swing on, balance on, climb on, um, all those motor functions that help improve balance and um, get them a good, uh, allow them to release some of their energy. So we're excited about that as well. And a reminder, there is a playground for grades one to five and a playground for grades pre-K to K. So those are two separate areas. Um, in terms of the six to 12 building, we are currently in cleaning mode uh, with our staff and doing some touch-ups. Uh, one of the things that we are working on though to correct um, that we had to wait until summer is our cafeteria floor. Our cafeteria floor, um, the grout was, was just not what we, it, it just wasn't right. So they've agreed to fix it and they'll be working on that this summer. So our cafeteria will be kind of under reconstruction as they fix those things as promised in our warranty um, in those things that need addressed. So uh, Tom, Glenn, were with me as we toured the building last Thursday. Anything that I missed in that? I just think that the, uh, the business advisory board that went with us, they were all extremely impressed with the layout design. They, when they could visually see the layout of the rooms and the finished product, the lockers in place, the different uh, floor plans for the different grade levels, the, the addition of the media center and then the second floor. I, I think they were all extremely impressed with the overall appearance of it and uh, one of them said uh, that he's more excited about the public seeing that than the new high school because <laughs> of the transformation that it's going through. And it truly is remarkable that the changes that uh, the public will see once the building is opened. Mm -hmm. And we are working on a dedication for that building. So we've proposed and hope to finalize Sunday, I believe it's September 10th. I'm going to look at my calendar real quick. Yep. Um, as our dedication day, September 10th. 
as our dedication day and open house for the public to do just that, to visit the building and see the transformation that has happened. So we'll get some more announcements out about that as well. Tom, anything you'd like to add? No, I just, just concur with what uh, Glenn had said and what you have already said. Uh, the building appears to be coming along quite well. and uh, I guess I'm most uh, pleased with the fact that there's just been a nice sequential progression of the entire project. Uh, didn't get things out of sequence and it's just made for a nicer flow of the overall construction activity. I would agree. Um, also under new business, it is not listed on our agenda, but one item that was presented last month for the board's consideration uh, Coach Redhead and Coach Niece were here to talk about dual sports. Um, if you could, as a board, just give me uh, some directive of, of where we are with that, what, what you would like me to see, if there's any additional information that I could provide to you. Diane, I would say we've had some discussion about this as a board individually and, and collectively, and we are interested in approving that on a trial basis okay uh, what we would like to see is we're not ready to change the policy so we'd like you to um, contact the attorney and see if there can be some kind of memorandum to allow for a one-year trial of the dual okay. sports policy with the understanding if it goes well we can continue and expand it and if it goes poorly we are not married to that to that change in how we do business. Would you like to, anyone like to chime in on that? Have any discussion about their thoughts on that? No, I've, I've heard from various community members in support of it. Some have made very well thought out, well reasoned, uh, you know, arguments in support of it. Um, and I agree, I think we should consider it for one year. Um, and assuming it goes well, which I'm, I'm sure with our staff administrators and team involved, they'll keep their, their eyes and ears on it. You know, we'd be looking to go <coughs> on that, but I think in a one-year basis, I think you're right. We'll see how it goes. And, and again, <coughs> uh, certainly it will not be for every student athlete, but there'll be certain student athletes that, that can benefit from this and certain team sports that can, that can uh, recognize and benefit from, from trying this product, this this new way of uh, allowing sports participation so okay so I will so if you could please I will do that I will follow up on my end by contacting the attorney and getting something ready for um, we do we're gonna talk later about a special board meeting or for next month's for full board approval so I don't think that we're ready to to approve a motion correct but I want the public to be aware that the board is in support of trying this for one year and seeing how it goes Okay, I will work on that and get that to you at one of the next two meetings. I understand there, there may be some tweaks that need mm -hmm. to happen even throughout the process or at the end of the one year. If it, if it seems to be going pretty well, but there's some things that could be, could be improved, then we'll certainly be looking to do that. I think it was clearly shared at the last meeting that you know, neighboring school districts are, are doing this. And you know, I, think, I think, yeah, and I think we owe it to our students to give them the opportunity to have the same level of participation opportunity, opportunity. Sure. And so I'm, I'm in favor of it okay okay all right thank, thank you, you very much um, next moving into new business under superintendent recommendations under administrative recommendations we have approval asked for board approval of an MOU with the NWO ESC for PBIS positive supports intervention system um, this is an MOU we've been working with uh, the a grant and with the ESC um, on our positive behavior intervention system and this will allow that work to continue through the next school year. We ask approval of the board for the service agreement with Central Ohio Medical Review LLC for the 17-18 school year. This is the company that helps us with our Medicaid billing. We ask board approval of overnight trip requests for girls basketball, swimming, and volleyball. These are annual trips um, that the girls take to different camps. Um, we get those approved in July so that the board is aware of those um, activities. We ask for board approval of the affiliation agreement with Northwest State Community College Nursing Program. 
Um, off and on, the Northwest State will place student nurse residents with us to work with our school nurse, and this agreement allows us to have that partnership with Northwest State and provide that mentoring service for uh, nursing students. Ask for board approval of MOU with Defiance College for hosting educational interns and practicum students. Very similar, these are um, young teacher education students that are doing some of their lab and practicum work with us and with our teachers. Ask for board approval of a resolution authorizing 2017-18 membership in the OHSAA for both our middle school and high school. Ask for board approval of a resolution approving participation with the ACE Digital Academy for the 17-18 school year. This is the company that provides our online uh, curriculum for our online students. Ask for board approval of the Northwest Ohio Juvenile Detention Training Rehab Center Educational Agreement. This is utilized when our students are placed with the juvenile detention system. Ask for board approval of the auction contract for our um, Portland auction with Halleck Realty that will be held, as we said, in September. Ask for board approval of deed of easement to the city of Bryan, and then next, a quick claim deed to the city of Bryan. So let me explain these two documents a little bit. The sidewalk path, walking path, that goes along Washington and the park system is actually located on school property. And it is in need of repair, and the city is willing to do those repairs. However, the city cannot repair something that it does not own. So this agreement would allow us to, uh, as a board, you would be approving to change ownership of that sidewalk property to the city of Bryan with the easement belonging to us and if I'm saying that incorrectly, Mr. Rossworm, you help me out. I think you have. Um, so again, this is only for the sidewalk property and the walking path. Just that little strip of it's property that, that goes along. It's that little strip that goes right along that the park. That little softball field, we will still retain. We will still retain, still retain the, the soccer, soccer field. the softball fields, and all of the other acreage at Washington. So just a little strip where the walking path is and enough room for them to repair it. Correct. Any questions? So questions on any of those items? Well, that strip though, they, the city owns half of it. The other, well, they own the other side of that strip, right? They yeah. own the other side where the light posts are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And the utilities. Correct. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, a motion to approve all of those recommend those recommendations from the superintendent. So moved. Thank you, Tom. I'll second. Thank you, Sandra. Please call the roll. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brian? Yes. Thank you. On the addendum, under superintendent recommendations, uh, the Bryan Soccer Association had approached the school district and the board seeking a donation towards their light project. And so, um, with your approval, we would donate $10,000 to the Bryan Soccer Association to help support their light project, their field lights, at the Varsity Field, which is located at Bryan Recreational Park. Um, this is much due, in fact, to the uh, reasoning that we, our athletes, use this facility. And the purpose, as been explained in the request, is that it will allow us to expand and give more students more opportunities for junior varsity games. So it, it does, um, I think it would be a, a good gesture to show support of this project and I ask for board approval of that recommendation. And those monies will be coming from the permanent improvement fund? Okay, I think that's our long term. Well certainly, you know, we thank the parks for allowing us to use their fields because that's what we do and, and the cost of us to build and maintain our own field would be significantly more so I think that's a great idea. To, to um, participate in them improving the field that we use. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? If not, a motion to approve that donation to Bryant Soccer Association. Also move. Thank you, Sandra. Second? Second. Tom, please call the roll. Emily? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brian? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Thank you. Under commendations, we'd like to 
celebrate once again a little bit of graduation. We have the class of 2017 top 10%, the class of 2017 honors diploma recipients, and for all of our students, the fourth quarter all A honor roll for grades 9 through 12. We'd like to congratulate Parker Harris on his participation in the state track and field meet in pole vault. That was his second year being um, qualifying for the state meet. Uh, under middle school, our May Students of Actions for grades 6, 7, and 8. Our all A honor roll for grades 7 and 8, as well as our top 10% for grades 7 and 8. Um, and I, whoops, I missed our all A honor roll for grades 6 as well. So congratulations to all of those students in our secondary building on all of their accomplishments. At the Bryan Elementary campuses, we have the Character Trade Awards for Enthusiasm for both, for both the Portland campus and the Washington Elementary campus. We also have PE Gold Slip winners Kaysen Perez, Le Levi Crocker, Chloe Davis, and Gold Slip winners of the year Devin Kaiser and Jack Ridgway, and Piper Hanna. And then our Character Bear classrooms were Mrs. Boyer's and Mrs. Schilling's classrooms this month. Okay. I move to approve the accommodations for the month. Thank you, Glenn. Second, please. I'll second it. Tom, please call the roll. Cindra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brian? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Thank you. Under personnel recommendations, we accept with regret the resignations of Dennis Schult as bus driver, effective June 7th, Colton Royer, high school intervention teacher and middle school football coach, effective May 30th, Doug Billman, high school health and PE teacher, effective June 30th. We would like to offer a one-year limited teaching contract to Lauren Lockwood, grade five intervention, Master's level, nine years experience on the A1 salary schedule, pending receipt of her Ohio license. She's coming in from out of state. And Sarah Noachek, elementary CC classroom teacher, bachelor's level, three years experience on the A1 salary schedule. Uh, Sarah is coming to us from another local district. Transfer of classified personnel for the next school year, Peggy Harvey to 612 salad bar attendant, server 4.75 hours per day. We found that our salad bar was so popular that we need a set of hands on it at all times. So um, she is going to assist with that and also assist with serving. And then Carrie Keck to pre-K to five head cashier at five hours per day. Transfer certificated personnel for next school year, Nicole Manahan to elementary CC teacher, Chad Savage to 6 to 12 health PE teacher, and Lyndon Spies to grades 3 to 5 elementary PE teacher. Extended time contracts for our guidance counselors, uh, music with Rich Will, uh, our technology and librarian, Andrea Bible, Amber Fransdorf, Jamie Morris, and then our speech therapist, Christine Alt and Rebecca Kuhn. Supplemental contracts, middle school quiz bowl, Lisa Heslop, choir accompaniness, which is paid at our tutor rate, Laura Knight, assistant musical director, Laura Knight, musical accompanist, Patricia Vreeland, fall play director, Betsy Zuber, assistant fall play director, Heather Teagarden, set one and two director, Bernie Davis, and assistant girls tennis coach, Hannah Renolette. Substitutes for our classified staff are listed, as well as volunteers for our athletic department, Brian Arnold, Evan Davies, and Matt Smith. Okay. Any questions on those? I don't think so. Motion to approve the personnel recommendations, please. So moved. Ryan? Second. Thank you, Glenn. Please call the roll. Tom? Yes. Ryan? Yeah. <clears throat> Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Cindra? Yes. Thank you. On number three, I'm going to defer a little bit to Mr. Bassett, who helped coordinate the selection of our textbooks for the upcoming year. So the list of the um, publisher and titles and grade levels are listed for you. But Chad, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, just a committee for each of these um, grade level representatives or department representatives that we've narrowed down our choices, had some representatives from these companies come in and take a look at what best served us. You see the upper grades, six, seven, eight, even the AP Biology. We say textbooks there, but we're really meaning on the Chromebook. Um, what we've done is, is decided to go with the classroom set. So they do have a classroom set of hardbound 
physical textbooks. So they have one, one set of books. Yeah. If somebody wants to turn So my classroom, if I'm teaching psychology, I have a set of 30 textbooks in there. And as kids rotate through the day, we have a physical book we can use. But every kid has a license on their computer on the Chromebook. The same, so, same so when they say I don't have my book at home, yeah, <laughs> no, mom and dad, can, no. Yeah. Um, so it's with them, but if we do have a kid that um, you know doesn't have internet at home, whatever it may be, they can, they can check out the book, maybe take ready it home. To make that jump completely to sure. to paperless, but we're we're getting closer. Um, fifth grade with addition of Chromebooks too has also jumped on that as well. They think they're going to be fine with um, it's a classroom set, mm -hmm. and then everything else is on their Chromebook. So good. Questions you have about them, Francis? I don't think so. Motion to approve, please. So moved. Tom, second, please. Second. Ryan, please call the roll. Ryan. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Emily. Yes. Sindra. Yes. Tom. Yes. Thank you. Next, under um, board policy items, so in the first section, we have our second reading and approval of the following board policy items. These were recommended by NEOLA. Um, these are due to changes at state or federal levels with laws and requirements. Um, if there are any questions, I would gladly answer them for you. I don't think so. A lot of you know, Neoma keeps us up to date with our legal requirements to make sure our policy is in line with law requirements. And then just as a FYI, once the board approves them, my process is we send them back to Neola. So Neola uploads them to our website. So anyone in the community has full access to our board policies at any time. Right, there's a link they can go there's on There's a link they website. can go to. <clears throat> and I also send an email out to all of our staff so that they're aware of the specific numbers that have changed or been updated so that they can look and see what has changed if they so choose to do. Sure. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, I'll move to accept the board policy changes. Thank you, Sandra. Second, please. Second. Glenn, please call the roll. Glenn. Yes. Emily. Yes. Sandra. Yes. Tom. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Thank you. And then I will explain a little bit of the next one. So this also came as a recommendation from Neola, but it is in direct response to the state making changes to our gifted policies that has to be in place by July 1st. So I'm asking the board to waive the first reading and to immediately go to the first and second reading and approval of the gifted education and identification. What the major changes They've put in more stringent requirements for teachers to be deemed um, gifted teachers in the classroom or to serve gifted students. Teachers must have a minimum of 30 hours of highly qualified professional development in year one and in year two, and then ongoing professional development after that. They've also changed... In gifted education or subject matter education? Gifted. Specifically in gifted education? Specifically, it has to be approved gifted training. Do we have any teachers that are in that qualification? We found that our teachers can get an actual license in gifted in a much shorter time period than they can meet the new state requirements. Okay. So, they're, so I'm so guessing they're working with you? And they are working with me and they are following that route. Okay. Um, so and then the identified. second major change is the identification. We must now test and provide up to two tests per year per child, whole grade level for um, reading, math, overall gifted cognitive, um, science. No, not no, science, no. and creative, creativity, creative arts. Yeah. Creative arts. Yeah. And so we'll do that at grade two and at grade six. We have to whole grade test both of those. And then if there are any students that are close or on the edge, we have to retest them um, up to two times per for that grade band. Okay. Well, we can't fight City Hall sometimes. Um, with that explanation, thank you for that detailed explanation, and I would entertain a motion to approve the first and second reading and approval of the board policy item regarding gifted education and identification. So moved. Tom, second, please. Second. Thank you, Ryan. Please call the roll. Emily. Yes. Sindra. Yes. Tom. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Okay, legislative update. 
So the House released their version, the Senate released their version. To my knowledge, there's still some compromise going on. I'm looking at Chad and Rob, because all three of us have been following this very closely. Uh, we hoped that it's in place by July 1, but with today being June 20th, we're not sure. Sure. And uh, we've heard uh, some good things, like elimination of resident educator program, and possible elimination of third grade reading guarantee, but we're not positive. It's not in both versions. So wait and see. Wait and see on that. Um, board meeting dates. Board retreat uh, work session was held today. Our next Board of Education meeting, um, regularly scheduled meeting is Monday, July 19th at 7 p.m but we would like to schedule a special board meeting for June 29th, is that correct? At 7 a.m. At 7 a.m. on yes. a Thursday. So Thursday, June 29th at 7 a.m. for the purpose of? Final appropriation approval for this fiscal year. Okay, thank you very much, Rob. It's Monday, July 19th, is that the? That is the regularly scheduled board meeting. No, it's what she's saying is, is the is 19th. That the oh, on Monday? I think that's the right date. Let me look. Good point. I don't think I it don't, is. I don't you don't think, think it, it is? No. no. 17th. 17th. Thank you. Just so that clarification. Good. Clarification. Good catch. Good catch. Okay, Monday, July 17th at 7 p.m. That's right. Today's the 19th. It can't be. And then we just had our business advisory committee um, meeting was held June 15th at 7 a.m. So, any other discussion items from the board? I don't think so. I'd just like to express our appreciation for the time that the administrators spent today with us and giving us an update and, and uh, letting us know where we are and having some discussion <coughs> about where, where we're going in this new exciting year coming coming ahead. Uh, everybody in the same building for the elementary. That's exciting. Correct. And continued on the changes coming for the high school. So thank you both. Thank all of you. All right. For your time um, today. So we do have Mark and Mr. and Chad here to present. Uh, Karen had a commitment awesome. with her ball game with her daughter, and Eric had some commitments as well. So we are so glad you're here. Can't stay away. Can't stay away. Yeah, just a little bit on that third grade reading guarantee. Um, they did up it this year. Um, like we said, it's kind of in limbo. We don't know whether it's going to actually play out for next year or not. Uh, we'll wait and see. Cut score used to be a 42. It's a 44 this year. If they have it. If they have it. So or they, or we have to plan, plan though, because that's retention. So we have to plan like it's there. Um, we just got our scores back um, this week. Preliminary, really raw data. So we broke those down. We looked at their kids. We have two kids that didn't make that 44 score. Um, Did they make 42? You know, well, I don't even look at that. I, I, looked, at, I looked at 44 and went, okay, these are the two kids we have to plan for. Um, so what we need to do with those is we'll, we'll plan for August, bringing them in to do some remediation do before some school summer starts. Summer intervention. Yeah. Um, then the state allows us to an alternative test called the Terra Nova um, to test them different than the air. So we'll, we'll try to get those kiddos through that. So um, there's a possibility they could be proficient by, absolutely. by the start of yep. school. Yep. Thank you. Um, so they have to have the 44 cut score be identified as special education. Um, so we have two kids that don't fall in those categories. We'll start planning for them um, to try and remediate them before school, depending mm -hmm. on this still being in existence. Once again, we'd rather plan and then the state comes and say, Or maybe next week. Third grade reading guarantees no more, and we say, okay, we go on from there. Um, but either way, we know we need to intervene with these kids. Sure. Um, whether it goes away or not. So we'll keep, uh, keep our tabs on that and see where it goes. And again, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Mr. Rary, we're so glad you could join us. Yeah. We're still continuing our, um, I guess, preparation for 17-18. I mean, we're full throttle forward now as we're in summer mode. So we're, um, as I was just walking the village today after our board retreat, and the custodial staff is hard at work, and I think counting the days that they have in that short window for them of summer to get everything done with that standard maintenance. So it's going to move quick here throughout the summer. Um, on the horizon for us, we have test scores coming from our state tests um, at the end of June. So we'll break those down once we receive those. The scheduled date for that is June 27th, or so they say. So we'll see it when that so when that comes to us, uh, we'll break those down. And other than that, we just have some summer classes happening right now with summer PE and health and um, our OC, and then some credit recovery classes going on. So we just wish our students uh, 
relaxing and safe summer, and we'll see everyone back late summer and early fall. Okay, thank you. I don't have any need for executive session, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll so move. Sindra? No second. Tom, please call the roll. Sindra? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brian? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Emily? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for your time today. I appreciate it very much. Thank Tomorrow you, everybody. Day.